Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition. Last time, unfortunately, Frobo met his untimely demise in the Underdark. And so now it is time for Campaign 6. In Campaign 6, I'm going to do something a little different. Previously, we've done full party runs, solo runs. But this time around, I'm going to do duos, where both heroes have the same race and class. And to start, we're choosing Warlock. So I would like you to meet Grace of Will and Grace. Now, I've never played with Will before, so it's going to be a whole lot of new interactions and scenes and all that fun stuff. But let me talk you through Grace before we kick off. Grace is an urchin. This gives us sleight of hand proficiency and stealth proficiency. Race is human, as Will is, so we have a base racial speed of 30 feet and plus one to all of our stats. Unfortunately, in the early access as it is currently, we do not have the option for a feat with the alternate human. This is our appearance. Our class is Warlock, and we have gone for the Great Old One, as Will is the Fiend. And so I thought I would take the alternate so that we have a greater diversity of skills. For cantrips, of course, you have to take Eldritch Blast. That's going to be our big damage dealer. And over here, we're going to take Mage Hand. And then for our spells, we're going to take the two custom spells that we get in the uh, the Great Old One's skill set, which is Dissonant Whispers and Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Later on, of course, we will pick up Hex, but Will has Hex to begin with, and so I want to try and keep the variety up. Then we have our Warlock spell slots, Wisdom saving throw proficiency, Charisma saving throw proficiency, Light Armor, and Simple Weapons. For skills, we're picking up Investigation and Religion. We have a high Charisma stat because of a Warlock's ca casting modifier is based off of their Charisma stat. But Will also has several of the Charisma heavy skill proficiencies, so we're going to go for Investigation and Religion to try and diversify a little bit. And for our stats, we've of course got a 16 in Charisma for our spellcasting modifier. Dexterity plus 3, because that's going to be our armor class and our melee attacks, and possibly a bow and arrow if we need to for some reason as well. Constitution of plus 2, that's going to give us our hit points that we need. And for something else, we've just taken a plus 1 in Wisdom, just so we have like a little bit of perception and the rest. So, without further ado, we're going to jump forward. I'm going to skip the cutscenes. I'm sure you've seen them in other campaigns before. So we'll skip this cutscene and jump straight into the action. I will link to a video down below somewhere if you want to go back and see that cutscene. And as ever, here we are, waking up on the Nautiloid ship. And we just want to escape as fast as possible. But of course... We're going to take every opportunity we can to get some supplies. Up here on this ledge, there are a few cartilaginous chests. Potion of fire resistance, potion of healing. And even further around, there's a caustic bowl. That's some good AoE damage later if we need it. And another chest down at the back of this side. So... Warlocks are unlike other spellcasters in that they get all of their spell slots back on a short rest. However, they do get fewer spell slots. So currently, we only have one. Fortunately, for the hit points that we lose on that jump, we can just use this refresher here. Better. We only have one uh, spell slot. That will increase soon enough. Dead. But we get them all back on a short rest, and in the current version of Early Access, we have two short rests per long rest taken. So we're going to be able to use a lot of spell slots as we progress forward. This guy has some gold and a scroll of mage armor. Of course, we are only able to cast spell scrolls for spells that are on the Warlock spell list, and I don't believe mage armor is on the warlock spell list although before we carry on too far with the campaign i will triple check that later so with our extra potions and lotions collected we'll move into the next chamber some of these imps also have supplies not this one there's a healing potion here and a scroll of firebolt Again, I don't think we would know Firebolt as a cantrip on our spell list. However, we already have Eldritch Blast, so that's not something we need to worry about. 
if you can hear the strange voice, that is us talking to you. Not me, but us. You'll understand that in a moment if you don't already. But first, more chests, Please. more spare stuff. Cash, always lovely. Your path lies before me. Help us. Let's see what us has going on here. This guy's having a bad day. Yes, you've come to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return. They return. Who is they? I think you're past the point of saving. What's going on? Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us, please. Right, our dex is probably going to be our best bet. Yep. DC 10, we have plus 3 on our dex. No guidance or anything to help. A 9 is not going to do it. Epic fail. Well, we'll leave them to their existence stuck inside the head of another creature. And we'll trek on down to find Lazelle outside. So, I'm not going to demand it of myself that we kill Lazelle. We will team up with her just to get off of the ship. And then once that's resolved, we can then find Will and go about things just the two of us. I'll catch a break. But rather than giving myself the pain of trying to get all through this alone when we could have the help, I'll take the help here. We've done this sequence enough times to know that we can do it alone. We don't have to. Abomination. This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon's wing. A silver sword and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. <sighs> My head! What is this? <sighs> Squaw, you are no thrall. Blacketh blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Imps block the path forward. You will assist me in destroying them. We must reach the helm before we transform. All right, let's get going then. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. All right, so we've gained Lazel on our side for now. I'm just going to sneak for a moment because I believe... If we are unseen when we attack one of these guys, with our opening Eldritch Blast, we should be able to get advantage on the attack roll. And our stealth was successful, so we'll get another shot at that. Right, so Lazelle, not yet in the fight. Alright, now we're all in. So Eldritch Blast is a ranged attack roll using our Charisma modifier and our proficiency for our attack rolls. And it does 1d10 force damage, which is really good because force damage is almost never resisted by creatures. I'm just going to move some of these things around. their firebolts doing them no good but they are trying to maintain the high ground simple stuff 
it's just a shame when your D10 does one damage. But we should be able to alleviate that in a little while. First, let's collect our supplies. There's a few more dead mind flayers around the edge of this room that we can get benefit from killing. A light crossbow. I don't know if... Yeah, we don't have currently a melee weapon. Not that we won't be using Eldritch Blast almost exclusively for our ranged attacks. But we can equip it, and so we may just do that. It's going to become... Excuse me. Going to become particularly useful if we ever have things like fire arrows or force arrows that we want to shoot rather than just doing 1d10 damage. So let's equip that. We'll heal up here because we can. And head on up the rest of the way. If the gods are watching me. These guys are having a bad time with the dragons that are flying around. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. If you're looking for it, for maybe a rogue's offhand weapon or something else, then this dead thrall has an extra dagger. So what we can do is, if we go to our character sheet, we're only currently single wielding a dagger here. We can dual wield, that gives us the offhand melee attack option as a bonus action when attacking. So even if we attack with something like a spell for our main attack, we can still bonus action have a chance to do a little bit of extra damage. Lend a hand, won't you, love? There's a rat in the kitchen. Ten red rats. And they're flying and they're clawing. The Mind Flayers have already enthralled him. Leave him, or we will share his fate. Sorry, buddy, but you're worth one XP. Again, if we try and sneak our way up these stairs. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to stealth into an advantage on that attack, but we didn't need it. And that guy's gone too. Good here, I hope. Let's take the gold. Any more weapons or anything else? We could take this battle axe, but we're not going to be proficient in heavy weapons, so we'll just leave that for now. More cash. I'm actually going to take this candle, because as a human, we do not have dark vision. And neither will Will. And so that's going to be a problem going ahead when we're in dungeons full of darkness and the like. Our perception is going to be one of the trickier things to have to deal with in this campaign. And get through that membrane. Don't waste a step. And in here we find Shadowheart. Isik, back. Touch nothing without knowing its purpose. So we'll take these jewels and stuff. There is Shadowheart in her pod, except the game hasn't loaded her into, like, the general environment. But we know that she's in there. And we can get her out. Never wanted the easy path. If we pop through here, not only is there something for us to kill for experience points, have to keep going. You can go into real time, uh, sorry, turn based mode so that this thing moves slightly more slowly. And I think let's try Dissonant Whispers. So it's frightened, and we do 3d6 damage, which is great. It better not heal itself. We should get another turn. Perfect. So that Mind Flayer, Intellect Devourer, rather, 
is dead. Let's get out of turn-based mode. Nothing there, but up here, What's in here, there's another dead thrall with some goodies. Let's take the gold, we'll take a key. If we come back through this way, we'll find exactly what, very conveniently. Just over here, there is an elaborate reliquary. Open up. And we just found an elaborate key, which could be telling us something. So there's an eldritch rune here. I'll also just take me. this stuff for selling. And next to this pod, there's this strange contraption. The console appears dormant. There's a socket in the console, shaped like the rune you just found. Insert it. The console hums to life. Ladies and gentlemen, one shadow heart. At last. I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness. Because you have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. I'm just trying to get off this freaking boatman. Fair point. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Alright, let's do it. I'm Grace. One moment. Alright, let's go. Finally. She's right. So step forward three strong we could use a short rest to get our spell slot back but just through here we can just touch this restoration pod we are nearing the helm once inside do as i say who put you in charge i'll trust my own judgment king yank as i was saying touch that we get our spell slots back and all of our other skills and abilities and then through this door we have the big conclusion of the boat Shared initiative between Grace and Shadowheart, so we can take our turns in whichever order we prefer. And over here, Commander Zalk is in a fight, and he still has a very particular sword in his possession. Now, last time I failed to get that sword, but this time we have spell casting that does damage on our side. And so between us, there might be some chance that we can get that sword, even if we'll never be able to wield it. Lazel, would you please finish off this guy? And you don't have enough movement to get to that one, so we'll save your second wind for just a minute. We need to get out of here now. Yes, we do. Are we in range for Tasha's hideous laughter? We are. 55%. They make the save, unfortunately. How high was their save on that? Saving throw 12 plus 1 and our DC was 13. So they only just made it, which is a shame. 
Unfortunately, we won't be able to try again because we are now out of spell slots. But Shadowheart is here. And they have Guiding Bolt. 16% chance. That is horrific. Alright, maybe the odds of us actually getting this guy dead aren't super great. So we'll just start taking out the uh, imps so that we get more XP when we get off of this thing. Lazel. Thank you kindly. And we're going to dash further through. So that spends our action to double our movement speed. Then there should be some more imps back here, but unless something is bugged today. More dashing over here. There you go. There's your extra imps. So, Lazella's already dashed. We could take second wind and dash again to get even further forward. But we can also take second wind. Oh. No, I'm not thinking of second wind. I'm thinking of... Uh, the one that gives them two actions, which apparently they don't have yet. Alright, we're going to keep attacking these imps while we're here. That's a bad time. Opportunity attack against Shadowheart sees her downed. That's a bad time. Laser, would you just get Shadowheart up to one hit point? Just so that she's alive when we get back down to the ground is all I want. Because, of course, we're not going to bring Shadowheart on our journey, but we can still use her to take things from her or otherwise... use her existence to our advantage in some way or another, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to disengage. I should have done that the first time, obviously. And this guy's still almost got 100 HP, which we're certainly not going to be able to compete with right now. I know there's... A way to use some explosives to help this fight go down a little bit easier, but I'm not here for that today. Alright, this looks like the last one. Now we just have to get up to the console. We can dash to get there. And that's this part done. She should be barbecued at that point, surely. And that's definitely 1d6 bludgeoning damage.
And here we are. On the beach. Every time I load into a new place, these uh, pop-ins and stuff do take a little while. Please don't crash. Okay, we're doing the beach bit before the falling down bit. Let's just skip over this. And we're back on the beach again. So, step one complete. We've escaped the ship. Step two is go and recruit Will. So rather than doing the temple or any of the other side questy stuff from here, we're going to beeline straight to the goblin fight and see how we deal with that even just at level one. In any case, thank you ever so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.